everyone, it's Carissa at Sprinkled with Glitter and I am here with a little bonus video for you today. I'm going to be creating a card that has a Polaroid frame on the front and I know that I wanted to have a certain sentiment but I don't happen to have a stamp that has that sentiment. So I've decided to go ahead and use my Silhouette Studio software to create a print and cut image and create that Polaroid photo frame with the image with the sentiment already printed on it. So I'm going to show you how I did that. I am here in my Silhouette Studio software and when I open the Silhouette Studio software this is the default that it comes up to. I have a 12 by 12 mat, a 12 by 12 piece of paper and my page toolbar or window on the side is showing. Now if you'll notice here that says use printer setting my printer does not have a 12, I'm not able to print 12 by 12 paper on my printer. I just have a standard printer, it's an HP printer. And so it only takes eight and a half by 11. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my paper size to the letter size here. I can leave my cutting mat and all that the same um, because it will be cutting on a 12 by 12 mat. The next thing that I'm going to do, because this is a print and cut file, is I'm going to go to the registration marks window. Now, when you're use, doing any sort of print and cut on the silhouette, you want to make sure that you have the show registration marks button clicked. That's going to put this little square and these two sets of lines on your paper. It's going to actually print them on your paper when you go to print this out. And that just helps the eye of the silhouette find out where your paper is on the mat, how it's lined up, and it helps the silhouette find your shapes that are within this paper. So you have to have that on in order for the print and cut feature to work properly. The next thing that I'm going to do is go over to my library and I'm going to show my library and if I just go to show all designs I'm going to click out of this so you can see how it would default. Show all designs. I know that the shape I want to use is a frame. So I'm going to use my search button up, or my search bar up here and I'm going to type in the word frame. And here is the Polaroid photo frame that I want to use. And you can see all the other frames that I have that pop up. So I'm just going to double click this to add this to my mat. And I'm going to pull it up into this left corner because that makes my eye happy. And I'm going to just zoom in here so that we can all see this better as I'm working. Now, I do know that I want this about three inches wide. So I'm going to go ahead and go to the side here. If you grab these boxes that are around your shape here, that's how you can change the size. Now you can also go over to, I believe it is this one, scale window, and you can actually type in the size that you want here in these boxes, but I can just click and drag too. So I'm going to just use the click and drag, but if you have, say, a circle that you want a specific size, you can go over here and just type that in and then hit apply. So I'm just going to grab the corner here. I'm going to hold down my shift button and I'm just going to drag this out to about three inches wide. And that's it. So now I have the frame, that, the size that I want it, and I am going to start adding the text that I want. So I'm going to the text tool here and I'm just going to click anywhere on here and I'm going to type the words Holly Jolly. I'm going to click out of here so I can drag this over to where we can all see it. And you can see, obviously, this is way too large. And that's fine, because we'll just change the size later. It's also not the font I want, so I'm just going to highlight it and go over here to my text style window. And I'm going to type in lane, because I want to use this lane narrow font for this portion. Now, because I want this to print in a color, I'm going to use my fill color window I'm going to click on the Holly Jolly so that it's selected, and I'm going to use this dark gray over here. I don't know, I want it to show up really well. I don't know that I want a solid black, and I don't really care for this brown. I could go and create my own brown, but I'm, I just kind of want to use something that's easy. So I have that the color that I want, and I'm just going to kind of hit my shift key and drag this down to where it's a little bit smaller. 
So I can then bring that down here. I'm kind of going to try to eyeball it because it's going to print right here on the bottom of this frame. So that looks about right. I do want to drag it down just a bit um, because I am going to add some twine, I believe, across the top of this frame. So I want to make sure that when I'm designing this, I leave that space for that twine. I'm going to go over and grab my text tool again. I'm just going to click over here and I'm going to type the word Christmas. Let's see if I can spell it correctly here. Christmas. Yay. And I'm going to drag it again over to where we can all see it. I'll click it again and highlight the word because I'm going to change the font. This time I'm going to use the Kushti script font. So there's that. And I'm going to fill it in the color that I want. Go back over here. I believe it was this one. And I'm just going to drag this down a little bit too. I'm going to pull it down below the Holly Jolly. Now I do know that I want my Holly Jolly slightly smaller than my Christmas. So they look a little too close in size to me right now. I'm just going to drag this down, make it a little bit smaller. And I like that. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these two text pieces. I'm going to pull them over here because I'm going to align them. Now I will put this right about there. I'm going to click on the Holly Jolly and I'm going to click on the shift key and then click the Christmas as well. And then I'm going to go over to this align window and I'm going to align the centers. So now I know that my Holly Jolly is directly centered over my Christmas. And then while I have them both selected, I'm going to go ahead and hit Command G to group them. And now I have this as one piece that I can move around. Now when I put this on the frame, it may be a little bit larger than what I wanted. The good thing is that I already have these kind of in proportion to how I want them, the Holly and the Holly Jolly and the Christmas. So as I drag this down, they will stay in the same proportion and the whole thing will get proportionally smaller. So I can just drag that down and then bring it down into the corner again. And then I've allowed myself a little bit more room up here for the ribbons and such. Now I need to grab this again because I need to make sure that when I go to print and cut this, that this holly jolly only prints and does not cut. So I'm going to go to my cut style window and because I just have the holly jolly selected that is the only thing I'm altering at this point and it's on cut right now so if I were to do it just like it is it would absolutely print but it would cut that holly jolly out as well. So I'm going to take and I'm just going to put no cut and then that will not cut. Now if I click on the frame, you can see that I have a cut. I could also go to here and go to the perforated edge. You can change these. Um, that's the cut. Here is the cut edge window. It doesn't change much on that um, particular shape. So I'm just going to put it back to cut and then I'm going to go ahead and fill my mat with some other things and I'm going to print and cut these on my silhouette.